So you've developed a type of curriculum that they can use in the classroom as well as abroad. Yeah, I've been involved in trying to develop uh, uh, materials for this for some time now. I was originally involved in uh, a task force that the AACSB set up on the globalization of management education. AACSB is the biggest accreditation body for business schools. And so uh, it was a committee of 13 people, 12 deans and me, and uh, since I had more spare time than most of the deans, uh, the chair, Bob Bruner, who's the dean at Darden, and I basically you know, were the ones who did uh, a fair amount of the drafting along with the help of the AACSB. And uh, I was uh, quite uh, sort of struck by the fact that a very disparate group of business school deans were all willing to endorse the chapter I wrote under my own name on the very small topic of what business schools should teach students about globalization and how. Wow. So the AACSB report led to the development of some materials, a course on a disc that, we, that the AACSB has been distributing mm. to all its uh, accredited institutions a suggestion from the AACSB, although it's not yet at least an accreditation requirement, that schools consider offering something like this, if not exactly this type of course. And then since inertia tends to be high in the academic sector, as well as many other sectors, uh, I've been involved in some discussions with them again recently about how we try and take this to the next level by trying to develop some digitized material that would be more like a one, two day seminar teaching the teachers how to teach globalization. Mm, I guess that's important too. <laughs> well, uh, you know, given the dearth of uh, qualified people to teach globalization, and uh, uh, this country is actually much more fortunate in this respect than the parts of the world where there's been a lot of growth in business schools recently. So if you look at countries like China or India, the last time I looked, India was supposed to have 3,000 business schools. Uh, there are definitely not 3,000 people in India qualified to teach mm. globalization of business to all those students, and yet they need to learn something about this stuff. So I think part of it is uh, we're trying to sort of, you know, induce schools that do have their own faculty resources to at least consider adding some of this material to what they currently do. But I think in emerging economies like India, Mexico, Philippines, and China, to name four of the biggest concentrations of business schools in the world outside uh, the advanced uh, economies, clearly there's a sort of even more important role for trying to use technology to substitute for some of the deficiencies that are going to take decades to overcome in terms of training people mm. to teach this stuff and actually getting them down the learning curve to the point where you know they can develop their own materials mm. uh, entirely along the lines that they consider appropriate. What we try and do is provide a little bit of a framework that can be customized to the needs of different regions. And so the idea is we can provide a bit of a conceptual structure some general purpose teaching materials, but I suspect that what you want to teach students about globalization in India is a little bit different from what you want to teach students in the United States mm. about globalization. Okay. And so right now what we have is a customizable framework for thinking about how you design such a course.